For those that don't know, I'm Taylor Monahan. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the original sin, basically some of our early choices and how they've shaped this ecosystem, and uh, more importantly, how can we make better choices so that the world is better tomorrow. A little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Taylor Monahan. Uh, I've been in the space since 2013. I got in right before the Mt. Gox crash. Uh, I've been building wallets since 2015. I started my Ether wallet. Uh, we then did like a brand fork into my crypto, and we were acquired by MetaMask earlier this year. Uh, it's been a it's been a ride, that's for sure. Um, but I'm basically like an expert in how to like build wallets, also how not to build wallets. So maybe I can like share some expertise today. So I have a I have a four year old now, and this is one of our favorite books, and it's like quite ironic because uh, it's basically the story of my life uh, when I first started out. Uh, I was just building. I was building something amazing. And I think a lot of you here are probably in the same boat, right? You're in the early days, you're in the early stages, you're building something um, inspirational, right? That's gonna change the world, it's gonna make uh, people's lives better, it's gonna make society better. Um, and I hope that you're really proud of what you're building, right? Like you, you, you create something, you brought something new into this world. Um, and this space specifically is like truly remarkable. It is next level in terms of like what we are actually doing and the impact that our products can have. Um, these are all of the best Web3 words, all of the most amazing things that we can do with the technology and our products. Um, and most importantly, like I think, uh, you know, at the end there we have the inclusive community and we have the genius people and the good vibes. Like that's what I'm here for. Um, and that's kind of what I like to focus on most, right? Like when I get on stage, I like to talk about people. Because if we only think about the technology and the products that we're building, well, you're gonna end up in this situation quite a bit. Because the second that you sort of, um, I don't know. The second your dreams start to come to fruition, the second that everything starts to line up and you feel like you might have a grasp on it, it really does seem that then out of nowhere, everything keeps crashing, crashing down. Because building shit is really, really hard. And especially when you're a wallet and uh, you know, you're the product that people are, are using to access and manage all of their digital assets, it's really hard. Things come crashing down a lot. And the worst part of failing at like building a good product is actually like the failing people, right? We're failing the newcomers that enter the space. Uh, they're getting fished, they're getting scammed, they're optimistic one day, and then they have their hopes and dream crush the next day. And that's what basically the last, I don't know, like seven years of my life have been, right? Like trying to be better every single day, trying to help people understand the technology, trying to pe get people to understand how they can use this technology to actually improve people's lives. Because this shit is fucked up sometimes. As hopeful and as optimistic and lovely and as much as we want to believe that we are building a better world, it also means that sometimes you have to face the reality that our world is one where like, this is money, this is people's livelihoods, this is their financial well-beings, this is their families, their mortgages, their children's colleges. And this ecosystem specifically, the entire ecosystem from the get-go, has really been uh, built on top of these public-private key pairs. Like every single thing that we do traces back to the private key. And that private key is just like a single string of characters. And it's so important that um, I've spent countless hours trying to educate people about the importance of this private key. Uh, I worked with MetaMask years ago to rename it. Now we call it a secret recovery phrase so that we could like hopefully have people understand the importance of it and the secretness of it earlier. Um, but the reality is like the products that I've built are responsible for a lot of money getting lost. Um, and if we don't get significantly better, and make Web3 significantly easier to access in the coming years, it means that the products I build and we build are gonna be 
responsible for billions more dollars lost. And that's like a hard thing to wrap your brain around. It's not super pleasant. Uh, I would say it's pretty fucked up. And it's been pretty fucked for a while, actually. This is a comment I made in 2018. Uh, one of the earliest mistakes I ever made was when we created my Ether wallet, we didn't really understand why you shouldn't let people enter their private keys in the browser on a website. And so we did exactly that. You would generate your private key, you would enter it on the website, and that's how you access to all of your money. Um, that was a terrible idea. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do that. Uh, uh, this is... <laughs> This is Dan. Uh, Dan is one of the founders of MetaMask. Uh, and he has a bit more optimistic take, right? The way he kind of looks at the world around us and the things that we're building is, uh, he phrases it as, we're basically at the eating poisonous mushrooms phase of product development. And we're all just leaping. We're taking the leap of faith. Um, hopefully, we're coming back and uh, you know, letting our product creators know like what hurt and what didn't what worked and what didn't. And hopefully the people that are building those products are listening to the people who are adventuring out there into the abyss and updating and improving and iterating on all of their products so that uh, ultimately it hurts less in the future. Because what we are doing is truly like a new paradigm. Like Web3, we are really starting at the ground floor. Um, we are creating entire new systems. We're creating new tech systems, we're creating new social systems, financial systems, everything is brand new. Unfortunately, sometimes these new paradigms just, uh, you know, they come with some struggles. And I think one thing that it took me years to really comprehend and really grok was the fact that there is such a huge incentive for bad actors to get your private key, to get your secret recovery phrase. Like, it is so huge that, um, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of like random scammers around the world, North Korean hackers, like literally like nation state actors are trying to get your private keys. And we're building the product <laughs> that houses that thing, that has all the people's money. That's cool. Over the years, we've seen like an increasing number of scams and SIM swaps and social engineering, phishing, spear phishing, account takeovers, web two account takeovers, web three account takeovers, supply chain attacks, DNS hijacks, BGP hijacks, injection attacks. And even at the root, the cryptography itself, we've even screwed that up a couple of times, <laughs> resulting in keys either being stolen uh, or inaccessible. And this incentive is so, so, so large. Like I cannot emphasize the traditional world just does not operate like this. There's almost nothing in the traditional world where if you lose it, like that's game over and there's no like path to recourse. Like that doesn't exist. We have so many layers to protect people. Uh, and in crypto, we just don't have those yet. And the hardest thing about this is the reality that truly people don't understand that this like this string of characters, these like random numbers and letters or these words, like if they lose that or if it's stolen, it's game over. And increasingly, especially with this last bull run, it's not just their ETH, right? It's their tokens, it's their NFTs, it's their collectibles, it's their soul bound tokens. It's access to communities and games, it's it's everything, right? It's like basically turning into their identity. Like we're getting dangerously close to turning that key, that, that, that string of characters that nobody really understands into people's identity. And I think that we think a lot about education. We think a lot about UX. We think a lot about the UI. We think a lot about the things that we can do to fix it. I've given probably like 15 talks covering how you should educate people more and fix your UIs. And it's had some impact, but not enough. And the thing is, is that the people in this ecosystem are creating real value and they're creating it so quickly that I'm not sure that just like, you know, updating some copy is gonna cut it. Because again, at the end of the day, the whole entire ecosystem 
is relying on these freaking characters, right? This, this string, this string, that's a private key. Don't lose it. That's you, that's your identity and all your money and everything you have in your children's future. Don't lose it. Uh, it might look like this. That's the secret recovery phrase. It's, it's, it's the same, right? Don't lose that either. <laughs> that's everything. It's kind of, it's kind of absurd. Like when you really just like cut down to the core of it, it's absurd. And we have such big brains in the space, like truly remarkable innovation happening every day. We talk about game theory, we talk about incentives, we talk about the economics, we talk about so many different things. And yet somehow we haven't really been able to come to the conclusion that like, hmm, maybe we should focus for a second on how do we actually improve users' lives on the whole at the core protocol layer, right? We're like solving scalability. We're solving, <laughs> we have thousands of VIPs that are solving every single thing. Can we do something for like the end user though? That's gonna directly impact their lives and save them hundreds of millions, billions of dollars over the coming years? Because right now, migrating all of your assets from one account to the next is basically the best thing you've got. Earlier this year, MetaMask had 30 million monthly active users. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of private keys out there with ETH in them, with some asset on any of the other 23 EVM compatible chains, tokens, NFTs, non-standard tokens, standard tokens. There's open positions. There's open positions across chains. There's synthetic assets. And right now, if you get into the space and start doing stuff, and then something happens, right? Your computer is hacked. You're physically attacked. Your entire infrastructure is taken over by North Korea. Your only path of recourse is to try to front run the people who have stolen that, that phrase uh, and like move all your stuff really fast. And that like not only is, is absurd, uh, it also like it has a real cost. Like it's hard, it's stressful, uh, it's time consuming. Um, it punishes the people that are most engaged, right? So like the people that we want in this ecosystem the most, the ones that are like total degens, right? It's punishing those people because when something happens, which it will, they are the ones who have to spend the most amount of time and the most amount of real money to move their assets. And frankly, it should not be like this because we can do better, because this entire ecosystem builds magical shit all day, every day. We literally create billions of dollars out of thin air, like nothing. We can do this. It's like, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable how limitless our imaginations are in some ways, and how limited we seem to be in the other ways. So this is the original sin. We need to understand Collectively, whether you're building wallets, whether you're building smart wallets, dumb wallets, whether you're building dApps, whatever you're doing, whatever layer of stack you're in, we are responsible for what we create. We are responsible for how that impacts people's lives. Technology is incredibly, incredibly powerful, but it is not like the end all be all solution we can't just like put technology or code like in a bubble and say like, oh, that's just that thing over there. Uh, it's immoral, it's apolitical, it's, it's like just this thing. What we're building is, is not about, I don't know, whatever's on your landing page, right? Like what we're building uh, is trying to make people's lives better, make society's lives better. Uh, what we're trying to do is solve really messy problems, social problems. We're trying to improve how people can coordinate with one another. We're trying to allow people to take control over their lives and their futures and not be restricted by some government, some state, some corporation. And in order to do that, like we really need to value people and we should be putting people and the, the problems that people are, are encountering every single day, sort of front and center, like what are we doing 
to fix that. And our products are a mechanism that we use. The technology is, is the tool, but the choices, those are ours. And those have to be about people, and they cannot shy away from the hard things. This book is really real, guys. I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> All right, so new paradigms. This is a new world. We are actually successfully creating a new world. We have successfully onboarded a remarkable millions and millions and millions and millions of people into this new world. We have successfully disintermediated a ton of things. We've given people control, full control, where nothing can stop them. What we need to be heading towards is saying that this stuff, this key, this whatever you want to call it, right, whatever it turns into tangibly, this is mine, right? When we talk about identity, when we talk about our things, it's mine. What we should be striving for is it cannot be hacked or stolen because it's mine. I have full control over it. I can use it. I can access it. I can revoke it, right, if I think it might be compromised. I can be like, oh, let's just pause for a second and reevaluate the situation. Let's not let those hackers take that thing. And then once I've uh, secured the perimeter, I can recover it. The things that I do, they don't just happen on my behalf, but I'm giving my full consent. That consent has to be informed. Like I have to know what I'm consenting to. Um, I have to have a choice in that, right? I can choose to consent or to not consent. Because ultimately, we all need to choose how we interact with the world and also how we impact the world. Because it's our choices that shape this world. Every single choice that we make. So there, sorry, there are, there are a couple EIPs out there that are trying to tackle this problem. I am not going to uh, say which one is best. I think that the solution is probably not one of these. It's probably uh, a few more conversations, some online debates, and whatever evolves from that. I trust the big brains to figure it out. But these are the ones that'll get you started. They're the most recent ones. If you want to go down the rabbit hole, there's like 10 other ones that, that really did some deep research, but these are the ones that are kind of out there right now. ERC 4337. This is sort of operating, um, it doesn't require a protocol change. It'll be uh, implemented probably by flashbots. It gives some, quote unquote, account abstraction stuff. Then you have 3074. This is the one that, um, if you have an account, right, you have a private key right now, uh, you can delegate control. Uh, that's like sort of one half of it, right? Like uh, when we talk about key rotation or key revocation or key recovery, uh, it's, you know, you have to like assign that authority somewhere else. And then the original thing you want to like revoke the authority. Uh, 3074 is the one where you can like, it's the rules for how to delegate. And then EIP 5003 is a new one. I think we're calling it auth usurp. Um, this is a, basically you're going to deploy some like code. Uh, we imagine that in the beginning it'll be some simple code, but it'll basically take your current account, your, your current private key, and it'll give it some like smart contract abilities. 5003 really makes sense with 3074. It doesn't really, there's better ways to do it without 3074. Um, but most importantly, there's a lot of mechanisms and a lot of things we can learn from all the history and all the research that's been done, the conversations that have happened around these. Uh, and we can talk and discuss and put our big brains together <laughs> to hopefully come up with a really strong, powerful solution that will actually serve real people. Because that's the goal. We can do anything we want. And the most important thing that we do is continue to dream don't be limited by some, I don't know, uh, stupid tweetable phrase like code is law. Don't have your imaginations limited by 
uh, this ecosystem's obsession with uh, immutability or like trying to put technology and code over here and pretending that it's separate from the people over here. Everything has to work together, right? The whole system is where the magic comes from. And so we all have to work together. We have to use the tools available to us. We have to use each other. We have to collaborate, right? We have to get really, really creative. And we can't be, we can't be limited by anything, right? So I encourage every single one of you to keep on dreaming because that's the only way that we're ever gonna build a better world. And we're well on our way. The amount of people that are actually using this, this technology that we're building, it's truly impressive. I never thought that we would get here. But I do hope that we're gonna be able to make some real improvements before the next wave. Because as of right now, we're simply not ready for 100 million or a billion people to have their identities tied to that single string of characters. All right, I also have to show some stuff. Okay, so uh, for those that don't know, I'm at MetaMask, MetaMask is part of Consensus. Consensus has a ton of amazing things going on. One of them is Village DAO. So remember how I was talking about like, you know, uh, incentives and getting people working together and collaborating so that like everyone can be better and more empowered? Village DAO is one of our various attempts to do this. It's really, really exciting. Where is, is Village DAO in the house? Make some noise. Find them. They're freaking cool. Uh, they'll explain everything to you. Uh, it's a really, it's, it's, it's such a cool initiative. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Okay, next, uh, Infura. You know that evil centralized thing that the whole ecosystem is relying on and it's gonna be our death? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> well on its way to being decentralized. We could not be more excited. EG and the team have been working on this for, God, as long as I've known him, and I've known him since like 2016. It's been crazy. Um, but we are actually making moves there. That's a QR code. I don't know where that QR code goes to, but I assume it'll give you more information. Or maybe a party favor? I don't know. Find out. Uh, is Infura in the house? Is Patrick here? Oh, okay, okay. They'll explain to you, but all I want to say is that we are committed to building a decentralized world, right? We really are. And last but not least, where's Snaps? Okay, we got a lot of Snaps people here. MetaMask Snaps, this is the future of MetaMask. I know every single person in this room has some problem with MetaMask. I have problems with MetaMask. I sit there and I go like, why do you do this to me, MetaMask? And I'm building MetaMask. And then I tell people to fix it and then like, I yell at MetaMask more. I know that you've all been in this boat with me. MetaMask Snaps is actually the solution though because we can't keep making MetaMask bigger. We can't keep running around like <laughs> doing whatever Taylor says to do. That's not scalable. Uh, we are building for billions of people. What Snaps does is it enables every single person to extend the MetaMask functionality. So instead of MetaMask having to like build and maintain something for your custom thing and try to keep up with this ecosystem that moves so freaking fast, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the power in the builder's hands to actually extend MetaMask to better serve you as the builder and also better serve your users because you actually know best. Right? We, we can grow our team bigger and bigger and bigger and we still won't be able to keep up because the innovation that is happening in this ecosystem is so, so remarkable. And that's what Snaps aims to do. It aims to give everyone, the builders, the smart, big brains in the room, the power to make MetaMask work better for you. Uh, like you heard earlier, there's a bunch of Snaps people here. If you're a builder and you're frustrated with MetaMask, talk to them. They, they will explain it all to you. And that's all I've got. Just wanna say thank you. Amazing. That was an excellent talk. We have time for just one question, if anybody has a quick question. If so, please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you ASAP. Do I see a hand? I saw one and then I went down. There we go, just, I'm just blind.
Yeah, hello. Uh, just, a, just, just a quick question. Uh, what will you, what will be your perfect world for perfect users, uh, a perfect user system for you? In uh, terms of like the, the accounts and the private keys and stuff? Yes. Yeah. For example, uh, on what thing can we back the user information? So right now we, uh, in the physical world, we back up with the people's body. I, see, I know that person because I see that person physically beside me. So I will need something sim something based on the physicality of the person, or something like a second, uh, like a second degree, second sec second factor authentication. But mm -hmm. then, yeah. So the reason why I kind of shy away from um, saying like this one technology, this one thing, or this one thing that these one groups of people or this standards body is working on is like the solution, is that I think. Um, frankly, I think it's ignorant to think that like any one party or any one group of people can serve like the entire world perfectly and especially at, at the pace of innovation that we're seeing. Um, I think that there's like a couple important factors and I think the conversation is often marred in this like, like account abstraction is the word if you want to Google it, like Ethereum account abstraction, you can get the whole history. It's, it's such a big thing and it has so many goals at this point. But the thing that I'm most focused on is like, um, I think we need to provide a migration path for users that is uh, as cheap as possible. So not migrating all their assets, but going from whatever this old way of doing things to the new way of doing things has of a low cost. Secondly, I think that um, people should be able to like revoke, whether that's like permissions or their entire key or whatever it may be. Uh, they should be able to say like, no, that's not valid anymore. That's not me anymore. Um, and then I think that obviously uh, there's, in order to make those two happen, there has to be some delegation, some permissioning system, something where, because uh, like if you revoke all the permissions, then you don't have any, you, you can't do anything. So you have to like give them somewhere else. Um, and there's, there's a ton of people that have been doing a ton of work on this over the years. The Ethereum account abstraction research is in conversations like those, that's one thing. But if you look at decentralized identity, which has been a decades long effort by some remarkable organizations around the world that are really focused on this. Um, that's like a whole another rabbit hole that you can go down and I will not pretend to think that uh, like I, I deeply understand the, this design space as much as them. So if this is something that like really interests you and you want to start working on it, um, I would definitely recommend like starting there and looking for the experts and the people who are talking about it because they are uh, way smarter than me. Awesome. That's all the time we have. Please give Taylor Thank a big you. round of applause. Love you.